hopefully you can hear that. Haha. Uh -huh. I sound like a pack of Harleys coming in. Uh, driving to work today. I took the truck because I was picking up a couple trailers. One there, and there's another one. Uh, in the back, you can see it in the mirror there. It's blue. And we blew a, uh, a spark plug and old blue here. So the entire truck fleet is officially down. And this truck has aluminum heads, uh, which was a really bad idea. Thank you, Ford. The truck is awesome. We love the truck. It drives great. It's one of my favorite vehicles to drive, but I thought you might want to hear that. Yeah. Sounds nice, huh? So I went ahead and picked up the trailers and just came home with it. This happened to us one other time, and we actually had the 20-foot travel trailer on, and we came all the way home from northern Indiana, about a three-hour drive with it doing this. Not exactly the best thing for a vehicle, but at this point, uh, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> so I thought you might get a kick out of, out of hearing that. That's a, that's a real gem there. When I uh, contacted the guy to tell him I was going to come get him, I said, you'll know I'm there uh, because I sound like a pack of Harleys coming in. It doesn't even sound that good. But we'll get it fixed. Uh, there's a guy that we've had fixed the uh, two other ones that have done this on this truck. And it's about 125 bucks to basically get a helix oil put in it to get it fixed. So we'll be getting her fixed and back on the road just with the rest of the fleet. Hey, when you drive junk, it's just, just another day in the office. Hey everyone, and welcome back. Uh, we're not on a Volkswagen today. <laughs> we have a Ford uh, Triton V10. And it's a 99. It's a great truck. We love it. It has plenty of pulling power, and no matter what we've got it uh, pulling down the road or going to straight down the road, it gets 11 miles a gallon, so we always know what it's going to get. But they are notorious for shooting out spark plugs, and we are on our, I think this is our third one, and it cost about 200 bucks uh, to get that done, and so I just bought a kit, and we're going to try and do one ourselves, because face it, it's a V10. We got a few more yet to blow out. And you can see the plug is laying right back there. And the reason, and that's where it's supposed to go. The reason this happens is because from the factory they only have about four threads. These are aluminum heads. It's just a disaster waiting to happen. So I've removed uh, this hose that goes to the air filter. And I've unhooked all of that. And I've kind of just pushed it over here. I'm gonna go get some rags and shove into there. I'll probably go ahead and stop these up too because we're going to kind of make a mess here in a bit and I don't want any metal shavings to be where they're not supposed to be. Well ladies and gentlemen don't judge me too harshly if I do something dumb here I've never done this before and so you're going to learn with me and if I make something uh, go badly you'll know not to do that. My understanding of it is we have this little collar here that sits inside the cylinder up on top of the head actually and it keeps us from going uh, in too far. So we've got a reamer, we have a threader, and we're threading it to fit this collar. The collar then is going to allow our spark plug to thread in. And now instead of four threads, we have about 10, I think. So that is the goal. Probably put a little bit of Loctite Red on uh, this little sleeve and then put never seize on the inside against the plug. So that's the plan. And now we want to make sure that we got our piston down. We don't want to drill through the top of that if we can help it. So I'm going to switch to a little uh, scope, a little camera that's Wi-Fi, has a little light on the end. I've had this on the channel before. Really cool little thing you can get from Amazon for 35 bucks. And we're going to stick that down in and see where the piston actually is. I'm pretty sure that it is down. I just want to double check. Uh, I don't have audio on this, however, so it is just the image. So I'll have to dub over and we'll see where we're at. So the kit comes with a little air hose with a stopper on the end. You hook that up to a compressor and you bump the key and the piston's either up or down and it'll pop that stopper out. And then you just check to make sure which way you are. If you're down, you're good to go. If you're not, you bump it again until it pops out. So we do appear to be down all the way. We have the new 
Uh, cool pack, the old one. I am missing a few pieces. This little plastic piece probably fell off on the highway or something. There should be a little plastic, I'll show you on this one. There should be a little gray plastic. At least I think there should be. Oh yeah. So we're missing this, this part right here off of that old one. So we've got that, we've got a new plug. And uh, should be good to go. Hopefully you can kind of see from there. And yes, I'm going to address those bare wires when I get a chance. They have the little collar stuck down in there. Reamer is in. And it's gapping uh, maybe half inch between the stopper. So what I'm talking about is the gap here. Yeah, can't see me here, about a half inch. So that's all we're gonna cut is that. And uh, I've got an air wrench. I don't know that it's gonna have enough snot to turn that, but we're gonna give it a try. Like I said, I don't know if this is gonna have enough snot to turn it. We're gonna try it first. This is just the reamer. It's cutting, it's just taking a while. When the compressor kicks on, it's pretty loud, so I'll probably fast forward it here. We're about a quarter inch down from the little C ring that's there, little C clip, so we're getting close. So here goes to warp speed. And I am having to put quite a bit of pressure on the neck of this tool. gets it down there. Wait till that compressor stops, I'll bring you down. So you probably couldn't see it in the video, but this little brass uh, stopper or C, C washer uh, starts to spin as soon as you turn it, obviously, because it's attached to the, to the shaft of the reamer. But once you start to hit this sleeve that's down in your cylinder, it stops turning when you're all the way down. So you probably couldn't see that, but that's what that's designed to do is stop it from going any further. So I think we're all the way down with the reamer. So we're just going to try and wiggle that out of there and we'll take a, a air gun and we'll blow all that debris out of there and then we'll double check it with the camera and then we'll run the threader through. Now I don't know how well it's going to work but I'm going to try to get this camera to focus down there. You can see where we reamed out. You can't really tell how far of a wall I created but you can see it with the naked eye, of course. So we'll blow all that debris out of there. It doesn't look like it created too much, but we still want to get all of that out before we do any more messing. All right, I've got everything blocked off that I think we need to keep debris out of. Go ahead and hit that with the air gun. So the reamer uh, just slides through that little uh, sleeve, the little guide, but the threader portion, you can't put that through from the top end because it is obviously cutting thread, so it's taking the hole that you made and kind of making it bigger. So since it's bigger than the inner diameter of that, you have to actually load it from the opposite end. 
So we've got that loaded in. We got our clip back in, and we're ready to to cut that to cut that one out. And on this one, I'm going to do it just like I would do. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong here, so correct me. But I'm going to do it just like you normally do anything you thread. You go down about two or three turns, come back, back it off. That allows the debris. It allows it to cut and gets the debris out of the way that it is cutting. So I did not. I just put a little drop of oil on that. Nothing serious. And I'm going to go try to hit it like three times and then bring it back, bump it back, and hit it three times and bump it back until we get down. Clear as mud. debris out of there. Uh, it stopped on the on the uh, threader just a just a bit before it got to the end. It was about eh, I can't get you to focus. Focus. Try putting that up there. There we go. So it stopped about probably about right there didn't quite hit all the way down but the collar does have a little taper on it so I'm wondering if they didn't account for that so I hope I'm down far enough I guess we'll find out uh, if we drive this thing a day or two and it blows back out we'll know won't we so I'm gonna blow that debris out of there watch your eyes Lost a light. My uh, battery light died. Looks pretty clean. Let me run a camera down, camera down it, and we'll take a peek and make sure we're good and clear. And then I think we're ready to thread the plug in. So you can see here, there's quite a bit of debris left in there that I need to get out of there. Uh, we definitely don't want that. It should just go out the exhaust valve, but we don't want it getting stuck and keeping a valve stuck open somewhere. So I want to make sure we get the rest of that out of there. And so basically just blew it out a few more times and checked it with the camera again. And now we're all clean and good to go. Well, you can see a lot of that coming out in video, but I, I am very glad I had that little camera, that little scope because there were a couple times I thought it was clear and I wasn't. You could see it sitting on top of the piston, but it looks pretty good now. I think we should be pretty well good to go. So let me get the uh, plug and the insert and we'll go ahead and put some, I'm gonna put some JB Weld along the top of it, I've decided, and then put some red thread lock on the lower portion of it. And then never sees the plug. And it says to put it at 17 foot pounds. These are aluminum heads. So we are not going to go past 17. That's what we're setting her at, and that's what we're going to put it in at.
So this is what I've done. I put that collar on the spark plug and I have just Loctite red and it looks heavier than it actually is. It's not, I don't have very much on there at all. And as it gets closer to that last thread, I stop putting it on there. Just let it run its way down. And then JB Weld up near that little collar top part. So let's put that in and we'll let that sit and we'll start it up tomorrow. I don't have any magnetic sockets or anything fancy, so all I have is just a regular socket set. So to keep that plug from going kabang when I put it down in there, this is the trick I use with my mini. So I'm basically just going to make a loop right here, and I'm going to put the uh, tip of the plug through there. Can't see anything. Take a tip of the plug through there and pull it up through my socket, and then I'm going to tape my socket so I don't lose it down in there. What's up, buddy? Mama? Uh huh. Okay, we stick that in there. So by having the string on there, I can just drop the plug straight down. I don't have to have any special wrenches or anything weird. The thread trick is my uh, my dad's trick. But you always want to start that by hand. You don't ever want to start a plug. Well, I say by hand. If you can get to it, I've got a extension on it. But basically, you don't want to cross thread that. We definitely don't want to cross thread this one. We'll be doing this whole job all over again. So get that on there. 17 foot-pounds is what we need our torque wrench set at. So I have a little helper, so I apologize for the noise. He's driving tractors and doing whatnot. And we are set at 17. So this thing will give me a solid red Mama? beep when it gets there. Yeah, Stalton. The golf cart is loud. It's gas. We definitely got more than four threads now. We are at five, if I hold it. So let me keep torquing it around. I'll show you what this thing does. This is a pretty cool little tool. Uh, basically a little torque converter Makes any uh, ratchet turn into a torque wrench. If you don't have a lot of space and can't get into some tight spaces, this is the tool to have. The funny thing about this project, there's absolutely nothing that's ferrous metal <laughs> up here, so my tripod won't stick to anything. We're getting close. There's 17. So when it gives you the red solid, We're at 17.6, is what that says. Yep, we're gonna call it good. So now I just gotta get my thread off of there. Untwist the outside here. I cut it a little long, I should have cut it shorter. The thread trick is uh, awesome. You can use that for a lot of different things. So we just untape it. I'm going to stuff a little bit of paper towel down there so that we can get that. This is a seven millimeter little nut bolt that's on there. Because that little plastic piece is probably still on it.
Yeah, that wasn't near as hard as I thought it would be. A little tedious, a little nerve-wracking. Not as nerve-wracking as flipping over a bus, though, on a homemade rotisserie. <laughs> Nothing like taking your life into your own hands on that. Yeah, it actually broke off the... The whole thing's gone. So this little... Can't see nothing. This little stud that's in there, I think, is in the new one. But yeah. Just broke the whole thing out. Cool. I just want to make sure I didn't drop anything in there. Not that it matters as much now. Sorry if my head's in the way. Cool thing about these trucks is they're so big you can practically sit inside of them to work on it. Do I need to move you? Or are you just getting a headshot? It's down all the way. It doesn't feel like it is, but... It won't go any further, I don't think. Yeah, that's it. Go to your home, little man. I'm really, really thankful it was one of these instead of those in the back. Yeah, they would have been really hard to get to. I'd love to fire that up, but we're going to wait until tomorrow. And just let that, uh, hmm. Well, anyway, let me address this wire, wiring issue here. And, uh, we'll hook that buck up and we'll give it a start tomorrow. See what she sounds like. all in there. I've sleeved over, cut those wires and sleeved over, fixed uh, that little issue, I hope. Uh, we'll get the air cleaner back on, back hooked up, and uh, I, think we're, I think we're done with this job. Fingers crossed. We'll find out tomorrow. Well, we can't leave the hose off. we got to put everything back we took off. Did you get it tight? Yeah, I did. Okay, try it again. Crank it down. Real tight. I did. Like, break it off tight. Do it one more turn for me. Can you get one more out of it? Push down on the end of the screwdriver and put some pressure on it. Right down here where your handle is. Right down here. There you go. That was perfect. Okay. Oh, don't lose my screwdriver. Oh, sorry. Okay, you want to hook up the clip? There's a clip down there it needs hooked up. What clip? I don't right there see. with the yellow. See that black clip with the yellow hanging out of it? Right here. Right here. Oh, yeah? Okay, hook that up. Do you see where it goes? There's a clip on this hose we just put on. See Shine if you can this find... for me, okay. please. Okay, I'll be the light holder. There's a clip down there. Do you see where it goes? I don't see where it goes. Okay, let me show you. Hang on. Get it on there? Did it click? Nope. I... Oh, there you go. You got it. Now these two hoses right here. See, there's a big hose and a little hose? Yeah. They go right here. Okay, is it a big one? Yep, put the big one on top. Yank him out. Put him up there on top. Ah, I need to climb over it. Okay, climb My over shoe's there. shoe's stuck. Your shoe got stuck. I'm over. 
stupid big one. I'm gonna make you so hard to get on. Get him on there, wiggling. It's like it's on all the way, huh? That's stupid. I'm gonna fall in the engine. Yeah, you'll be all right. Use some muscles. There you go. Okay, finally. <sighs> Good job, pal. Come over here. Did you get it tight? What? The light's just hitting you, that's all. Wait, that's untight. Can you get can you get the right position? It's kind of a weird spot, isn't it? Well, that tube is so wiggly. Mm-hmm, I know. It messes me up. Whoa. You're okay. Hop back up. Get him? Finally! All right. Good job, buddy. Well, it's the next day, so we're going to fire it up and st see if it still sounds like a pack of Harleys or if Daddy, we got it fixed. I was the one that broke the truck for the record, so I'm the one that gets to fix it. It's going to need a bath now. That sounds a little better. I think we got it. The rattle you hear is the clutch on the uh, compressor of the uh, air conditioner. I'd say it's fixed. Cool. It was much easier than I thought it was going to be. Well, thank goodness that was as easy as it was to fix. I'm always a little cautious when I'm you know, doing something like that I've never done before, but it wasn't bad at all. And that's good because we have a good load to go to the salvage yard and now we're ready to take it there. It's a true Midwest truck with all the Midwest rust to go with it. Yeah, the whole bottom of the truck looks like that. So, but you know, it's just an old beater truck and we don't have to worry about it. I'm not picking on Ford at all for their design. Every design has a design flaw. But this is a known problem with this engine. Uh, is the aluminum heads only have four threads from the factory. And we now have about, I think about 11 in there. I counted, I counted six full turns. I uh, knew we were past what the factory was and just went with it. So I am pretty happy with that. And the kit we bought has five more in it, so we could do five more. Let's hope we don't have to do any more, though. If anything happens in, in the next few months and we realize I failed somewhere along the way, I'll bring you back and tell you all about it. But if you don't hear from me, assume that it stayed fixed. All right, thanks, everyone. Catch you on the next one.